Do you need more peace in your life? Who doesn't? I mean, in this crazy world that we live in, peace is like the most prized possession that anybody can have. And when somebody has it and somebody's living in peace, it's noticeable, it's contagious, it's covetable. And I believe that we, as the people of God, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we ought to be bearing that fruit of peace every day in our lives. However, oftentimes the circumstances of the world around us and our bank account and our relationships, they rob peace from us, oftentimes in even very legitimate ways. And so I don't want to minimize what you could be going through in this season, but here's what's amazing. There's something that God promises us as followers of Jesus that isn't reserved for people in the world that don't follow him. And it's called the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Why is this so powerful? Because it surpasses your brain, your mind, your ability to to formulate, well, of course I have peace because my family is great and my health is great. It's not about getting all of your ducks in a row. It's about having a peace that is so powerful that changes you, that changes you, that changes the atmosphere around you, regardless of having everything else in order. It's like you could have everything in disarray in your life. Your life could look like a complete mess in regards to how the enemy might be messing with some very key things in your life, or maybe uh, you're walking through just a really dicey situation with your marriage or your kids or your job. Here's what's so great. There's a peace that's reserved to you where you can be like, I have a peace regardless of what's happening. This is what this is talking about right here. This peace, this peace of God that surpasses understanding is rightfully reserved for you as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus. And here is how we get it. There's literally a three-step process. And we learn about this from Philippians chapter four, which we just read in in our daily readings. This is what it says in Philippians chapter four, verse six. Listen very closely. It says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. In his peace, will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Did you catch it? There's a three-step process in order for us to experience the perfect peace of God. And it's not about following a financial peace university class to get out of debt, which is important. I don't want to minimize that. And it's not about living a healthy lifestyle, which is also very important. And it's, it's extremely important that we as people of God are stewarding our temples well. But no, 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 that's not what this is talking about. There's a three-step process in order for you and for me to experience the peace of God that surpasses our understanding on a daily basis. Here's what it is. The first thing, don't worry about anything. The second thing, pray about everything. Tell God everything that you need. And then what's the last thing? Thank him for all he has done, okay? If you pray about everything, you tell God what you need in that prayer process, you cast your burdens upon him, and then you thank him for all he has done. So let's start with the first one. Don't worry about anything. Sounds like sounds like a uh, very casual and oftentimes like, how do you say it? A very um, insensitive way to deal with somebody who's going through a really difficult time, right? Like your friend's going through a difficult time. They just had the craziest breakup of their life. And you're like, don't worry about it. It's such a casual thing to say. And oftentimes it can come off very insincere and with a lack of empathy. But we got to remember that Jesus even told his disciples this. Jesus said, hey, What's it worth to you to worry about tomorrow? Today, it's got its own worries that you should be consumed with. And doesn't God clothe the lilies? How much more will he clothe you? He feeds the sparrows. How much more will he feed you? And so we can see from the heart of God through Jesus that he commands us to not worry. And so here's here's what we got to remember, though. God is not insensitive. The Bible says that he is compassionate. He is loving. He is kind. He is merciful. And so when God says to us, do not worry, here's what we got to do. We got to remember that God's tone towards us is, hey, I love you guys. I care about you. I recognize what you're going through. I too was a person. Jesus came, God himself, through the person of Jesus Christ to live the life that you and I could never live. He was tempted at all points like we are. He can empathize with what we're going through, but he didn't sin. And so the question is, okay, he's asking us, telling us really to not worry. So what do we do? We got to confess worry. We got to repent from worry. What is repentance? It's simply turning and changing directions, changing our mind, saying, I'm not going that way anymore. I'm going to go this way. We change our mind. We change our direction and say, God, I'm not going to worry anymore. Forgive me for my worry. 
Some of you, you're going to get free from simply saying to Jesus, forgive me for my worry. I confess my worry to you. We got to repent from worry if we want to be free from worry. But where do we put the burdens then? So what's amazing is God doesn't just tell us to not worry and then kind of in the back of my mind, we're dealing with everything. No, this is where the, the second part comes in. He says, repent from worrying. And instead of worrying, which is basically taking on the burden yourself, he says, pray and cast that burden onto me. Jesus himself said, anybody who's weary, let him come to me and I will give him rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's saying, hey, you weren't made to carry everything that you're carrying right now. Stop carrying it yourself. Turn from that. Cast it on me. Cast it on me. Tell me everything you're frustrated about. Tell me everything you're disappointed about. God's a big God. And here's what's amazing. He already knows what you're thinking. So regardless of how ugly it might sound on its way out of your heart, just be real and honest with him because he can handle that. And that's how you're going to be free from the weight of your situation. You repent from worry. You cast your cares upon him. You pray to him. And then here's the final thing. This is how you solidify. This is like tying the bow on this thing. You're binding peace around your heart and you're like tying that thing in a knot so it stays on you. You thank him for what he's done. Think back to what he's done in the past. Think back to what he did for you in a previous season where you were in a situation you could not get your way out of, yourself out of, and he showed up. Think about other people in your lives where maybe it wasn't for you that comes to mind, but you saw God move in a powerful way and somebody close to you, he answered that prayer. Why wouldn't he do that for you? The Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's what it says in Revelation. And what that means is when we testify of what Jesus does in our lives, it adds faith to somebody else. It's like a prophetic word for he did this in my life and he can do the same thing in your life too. We need to thank God, verbally thank God for what he's done in the past. Because what that does is it reminds us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he did it back then, he can do it again. Come on, somebody. He is the same God. He is the same God and he is able. So when we turn from worrying and carrying that in our own strength and we cast our burdens upon him and we thank him for what he's done, it's a faith booster to remind us he's able to do it again with this burden. And when we do all of that, this is like this simple formula, A plus B plus C equals D. A, if we stop worrying, B, if we pray, C, if we give him thanks for what he's done in the past, all these together equal the perfect peace of God that surpasses understanding and rules in our hearts. If you need peace today, here's my simple challenge to you. Apply this, take the word, do this very thing, and you're gonna feel the peace of God that surpasses understanding hits your heart in a unique way.